friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So, it's officially ours. We signed uh, the closing documents on this farm yesterday. So, we officially own this property now. It is ours. So, well, it's really more the banks. I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. But anyway, so, what I want to do today, we're going to go around. I want to give you an update on our pigs, on the pig situation, kind of show you, show them out of breath, where everybody is. What's going on? Who's pregnant? Who's not pregnant? What the problem is? How old we are? Feeders, all that kind of stuff. So I want to, we're going to go around. We're going to do a quick um, checking on all the pigs, and then I want to talk to y'all about how we financed this farm and the process that we went through. And for those of you that have been farming for a little while and are looking to increase your operation, increase your farm size, looking to buy another farm or more land or something like that. I will talk to you about how we did it and hopefully there's something in there that will be helpful to you so stick around with us for a little bit let's talk some uh, let's check on these pigs and then let's talk a little bit about some farm financing all right so group number one that i want to talk about and we're starting to get some rain we had a we had a couple of downpours today i mean we've had a really really good steady rain um during the day today with some strong downpours but this is we'll step out here this is these are the piglets that were born here on the farm back in late March, early April. And there are, there's 12 in this group and there's two more in another group. I'll show those to you in a minute. All of these, except for two, are females. These are all uh, for breeding. And we're gonna wait probably until after Thanksgiving uh, or Christmas, uh, closer to Christmas to breed these guys. Cause at that point they'll be, you know, seven, eight months old <clears throat> and they'll be ready to, uh, Actually, they'll be, yeah, they'll be closer to eight, yeah, eight months old. So at that point, they should be ready to breed. So got two feeders in with this group right now, and then everybody else is females. Um, that little Berkshire boy standing right there, uh, that's a uh, feeder pig feeding him out for processing. And then there's another one of these guys. It may be that red one right back there, I forget. Um, but anyway, feeding them out for processing. They'll be ready to go. A, you know end of this year first of next year we've got appointments um three a month so that'll work out really good so group number one this is our um, piglets from earlier in the spring now let's go over and look at these pigs uh mamas and a couple of their brothers so this bunch here these are the uh sows the moms to that group that we just looked at everybody in here except for two there's a little blonde boy right over there, and then the little black Berkshire uh, boy that's walking there with Sandra. Those are two intact males. We put them in with these girls because these girls have had uh, Jack. Y'all remember Jack? Um, he was born on the farm last September. He's now with our friend uh, Thad. Um, all of these girls had had Jack and those two little Hertford boys in with them. So everybody here, as you can probably see uh, is bred and we're getting close to uh, farrowing we're not going to farrow on this paddock uh, these girls are going to move we're going to take them back over here over on the right hand side where they got some more cover we'll put some round bells in with them for them to farrow in this was just kind of where we landed for the move uh, to get them up here it's definitely time to go as you can see they beat this up really really good we got to get them off of this as we're getting into winter uh, or we'll get a lot of wash there's the two boys out there uh, kind of eating by themselves. They play the devil trying to eat with these girls over here. I mean, they will not let them into the feed bowl. But again, I think I think all of these girls are pregnant, minus maybe one uh, that we're just not 100% sure on. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, expecting probably to farrow in the next couple weeks based on uh, some of this teat development and when the boars uh, went in with them. So should be having a bunch of piglets here before long. Um, We'll just see how it works out but yeah so this is group number two this is the mom to that group you just saw plus a couple of their brothers out there fussy man fussy all right so this is our third group so everybody here is right at a year old um hamlet um born last september pumpkin born last september everybody else last october this is the first group that we brought to the farm they're ready to move. This is just where they landed uh, whenever we first got here. So 
Our buddy Hamlet here has been in with these girls now for about four months. Is that about right? Since June. And we can't tell that any of them are pregnant. So we think that Hamlet um, is impotent for whatever reason. We've watched him try to breed some of these girls as recent as early this week. And man, he tries. He tries so hard, but he just can't hit the mark. Don't know why. And on every girl that we've ever watched him try to breed, um, that seems to be the case. I mean, he uh, he gives it his all, but uh, he just can't hit the mark to get the uh, get the job done. So we're faced with a decision on Hamlet. What we're going to do? Um, we've talked about just selling him outright as a boar, but I don't know that that would be fair to anybody that was trying to buy him for breeding purposes. Um, we certainly can't keep feeding him, can't keep him around as a pet. He's a good boy. I mean, he's not aggressive and he's very easy to manage. So we've thought about maybe even having a vet come in and uh, sedating him really, really heavily, castrating him, and then feeding him out for a couple of months uh, and then eventually processing him. That probably is going to be our best course of action for him um, because there's really, you know, there's really just no other use and I just am not going to process an intact boar and take the chance on getting boar taint. That's a, you know, that's a topic. Let me talk about that real quick. That's a topic that comes up on a lot of message boards, a lot of Facebook groups that I see people talk, is boar taint real? Is boar taint real? I don't know. And if you're raising pigs for meat to sell to the public, it's not worth the risk. It is not worth the risk to process a three or 400 pound animal and get all that meat back and it not be edible it not be consumable or you do sell it to folks and the boar taint is prominent and then you lose customers it's just not worth it learn to castrate learn to castrate <clears throat> your piglets when they're small if you're going to raise them out for feeders it's a tough thing to do the first time but after you do it the first time and you learn how to do it it is super super simple it's really easy to do so hamlet probably going to end up castrating him feeding him out long enough to get the taint out of him um, folks say about three months so we will uh, we're going to probably plan on doing that and then we have um, we have access to a couple other boars from some other farms that we will probably bring in and put in with these girls to uh, to get the job done because we need some piglets otherwise we're just feeding a bunch of pets so <clears throat> that's the update on this crowd they're ready to move Again, this is the paddock that we put them in. Still a little grass up here. Getting a lot of pressure down here where we feed. That's always going to be the case. But uh, with wintertime coming, we got to get some cover back on this. We don't want to get any erosion or wash. And we've got a good long way that we can keep going back up there on the top of the hill and get into the woods. So on the agenda for the next few days, we got three groups of pigs we need to get moved. So group number three, no babies. Got to get them, uh, got to get these girls pregnant. So like I said at the beginning of the video, I want to talk just real quickly about how we financed um, the purchase of this farm. And there are a number of different ways that you can do this. Um, and I'm going to talk specifically about how we done it. Um, there are lots of other ways. There's certainly, uh, you know, if you're sitting on a lot of cash, you can pay for it out of pocket. Owner financing, plain straight up commercial lending, uh, investors, lots of different ways that you can finance uh, the purchase of a farm. But how we done it was we went through the USDA, the US Duh, as Joel so lovingly calls it, and they have an arm called Farm Service Agency. And Farm Service Agency, or FSA, has a couple of different programs that farmers can uh, take advantage of to finance uh, the purchase or expansion of a farm. And so the program that we went with is a program called the Down Payment Assistance Program. And the way that works is, first off, you have to have at least three years of farming experience. And to prove that, you have to have three years of your federal income tax, your Schedule F. And we, we did have that. We had just finished that up last year. So we just had three years of farming experience. So you have to have three years of uh, farming experience. 
and you have to be, I think it was less than 10 years experience to, to get this. There were a couple other little, little nuances to it. Um, so check with the program, check with your local farm service agency to, check, to make sure that you understand those exact qualifications. But here's how the program works. So on the down payment assistance program, you have to be able to obtain commercial credit with a, just a everyday lending institution. And the trick with that for us was we had to find a commercial lending institution that worked with FSA. So that took a little bit of research on the front side. So we ended up going with a bank. Um, I think they're headquartered in maybe Missouri or yeah, I think maybe Missouri, maybe Arkansas, anywhere, somewhere, somewhere in the middle of the United States. Had a couple of branches in North Carolina, which is where we are. And so we reached out to one of the local branch presidents and uh, he was very helpful. First Financial Bank is the name of the bank, and these guys were just super to work with. Uh, the the uh, VP that we worked with was just on top of his game. He stayed in touch very, very regularly. I mean, it was a great, working with them was a great experience. So you have to apply for and be able to get commercial credit. <clears throat> so we, we were able to get um, commercial credit um, with the bank. Then um, you apply to FSA for the down payment assistance loan. And the way that works is the commercial lender has to be willing to lend 50% of the purchase price of the farm. And FSA will guarantee their 50%. FSA will then pay the other 45% of the loan. So you got 50 and 45, so you got 95% of the loan covered. That leaves you, the borrower, the farmer, the person that is um, purchasing the farm to come up with a down payment of only 5%. Now, that worked really, really well for us on a couple of fronts. Number one, the uh, and I'm not going to go into specific numbers, a, a typical 20% down payment, if you were going with uh, commercial credit and you were just financing it all through commercial credit, you're typically going to have to put down 20%. So for us, on the purchase price of this farm, 20% was going to be a very significant chunk of change for us. Could we have done it? We certainly could have. We would have had to absolutely sell the other farm first uh, and cash out on that to be able to go to closing and have enough cash to be able to, to go into closing with the 20%. But we only had to come up with 5%. That was also beneficial for us because while we did have some savings and we did have some money put back, we didn't want to spend all of our operating capital, the cash that we had on hand to operate the farm, we didn't want to drop all of that on the down payment and then not have cash to do improvements, to buy additional equipment, to buy more animals, to buy feed, and all those other expenses that go along with, um, with running a farm. Particularly as we're moving, you know, we're going to see a little bit of a, of a, of a pause in our cash flow, especially, and we're also getting towards the end of market season too. We're going to see a little bit of a pause in our cash flow. So we didn't want to have to dump a bunch of our cash out early on um, for the down payment. So commercial credit gave us 50%. Farm service agency gave us 45%. We had to come up with the five for the balance. So it worked out really, really well. Now, I want to talk a little bit about our experience. I, like I said a minute ago, our experience with the commercial lender, absolutely fantastic. Those guys were really, really good to work with. Farm service agency was not as easy to work with. Uh, there's a lot of redundant paperwork. Um, the particular agent that we were working with was not, um, he was not very responsive. Um, we had to stay on him very regularly to get stuff done, to get paperwork in you know, to get things moving and rolling. And so there was a lot of management on our side. The loan paperwork for Farm Service Agency was a bit more onerous than it was for the um, commercial lender. So if you're gonna go with Farm Service Agency, uh, USDA, just be prepared to be buried in paperwork. I mean, it's, it's a government entity. I work for the government and I, you know, some of that stuff I get, some of it I don't. Um, or state government, not federal. So, you know, it was that that was a bit of a challenge. Um, up until the day of closing, we were still having to make phone calls and send emails to make sure that paperwork was being done, funds were being sent. 
um, and a lot of just different little nuanced things that were, you know, very frustrating. Things that we should not have had to be managing, we were having to help manage on um, for FSA to keep things rolling. Another interesting thing about the Farm Service Agency loan, well, a couple things. Number one, the interest rate is absolutely phenomenal. Um, the down payment assistance loan is a 20-year uh, note, so it only carries 20 years. Um, interest rate, 1.5%. It is cheap, cheap money. So that worked out really, really well for us because interest on that is, I mean, it's, it's basically, it's practically nothing. So um, interest was low, 20-year um, note, and here's the most interesting thing, and we did not realize this. Again, our Farm Service Agency uh, rep never told us this. We never had a conversation about this. It was never brought up. Instead of making a monthly payment on that mortgage for Farm Service Agency, now because we've got two mortgages, we've got one commercial lender and one with Farm Service Agency. Instead of making a monthly payment to Farm Service Agency on that mortgage, we make a yearly payment. So we have 20 yearly payments that we have to make back to FSA that are all due every October, whenever, you know, uh, on the, on the you know, annual date of our closing. So every year we will be um, making a significant payment to Farm Service Agency. So Sonia and I have talked about that. I think what we're going to do is we're going to figure out, okay, what's that annual payment? Let's divide that into 12. And then every month we'll just sock that money over into a little money market, a little savings account. Just leave it alone, let it sit. It'll earn a little bit of interest. It's not going to earn much because, you know, the banks don't pay much. But uh, we'll earn a little bit of interest. And then at the end of the year, every October, we'll just take that account, move a little money over, write them a check, and we're off and running. Uh, and we do it again next year, kind of like a Christmas club. Uh, I guess we'll call it our farm payment club. But uh, that's kind of how that works. So I know Farm Service Agency, had, they had got some 100% loans. Um, they've got some other things that are available. That's the one that, you know, I'm the most, th this, down payment assistance is the one that I'm most familiar with just because we've gone through it. It took us about four months uh, from beginning to end with all the paperwork and delays and just, you know, a bunch of mess. Again, on the commercial side, the commercial lender was great to work with, um, but, you know, Farm Service Agency was challenging, to say the least. It was challenging. So, but anyway, so if you're looking to buy a farm, you're looking to expand your property, uh, I'd recommend looking at some of those programs can save you a little bit of money. Um, it's your tax dollars you've paid in. You have just as much right as anybody else to take advantage of those programs if you're eligible. So check with your local farm service agency, uh, your U local USDA office. Find out what those requirements are, what other programs they've got avail available. And uh, if you're interested in buying a new farm or expanding, look into that. I think, you, uh, think you'll be surprised at, uh, at what opportunities are out there. Um, creative, I mean, you know, if you're if you're thinking, man, I got to pay for all this out of my pocket. Um, there's a lot of opportunities out there to uh, find creative ways to finance and uh, and get your property purchased. So anyway, that's a lot of yammering. So if you've got questions about that, um, leave me a comment down below. Send me an email. Um, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. That helps us out a ton. Um, please, please, please continue to keep us in your prayers as we are exploring, learning, and finding out about this new farm uh, and this new property that the good Lord has given us the opportunity to manage. So, uh, but uh, may God bless you and your families, and we'll see you on the next video.